The um, next portion of our day is our presentations by four startup companies. We're going to be beginning with Quantified and the CEO and founder, Ari Tuckman. Thanks so much. Um, pleasure to be here. Thank you all for, for, uh, for your attention and uh, for the invitation to be here. Um, my name is Ari Tuckman. I'm the CEO and founder of Quantified. And the, uh, the mission of Quantified is really to bring a lot of the standard tools that are used in structured data mining, um, looking at um, really figuring out kind of patterns that you didn't know to look for, really kind of high power analytics in large structured databases. And Quantified developed to try to apply those techniques and gain those insights to totally unstructured data. And sort of how that fits in the context of data visualization is you have to know what to visualize, right? We've talked about really throughout the conference, um, data is only important if it kind of can be intuited by the human observer. It can be actionable. And there's obviously information overload in any field you're going to be working in. So the question that we kind of approach in terms of the data gathering and the data visualization is, how do you know what to visualize? How do you know what to show the user? Um, from an information retrieval perspective, which is kind of really what we've been focusing on, the first step there was recognizing that kind of the boundaries of individual documents have been shattered. When people are looking for an answer to a question, they're almost never looking for the document that has the answer to that question. What they're really looking for is an aggregate picture, a sort of a, a visualization of information chosen from a large collection of documents that are aggregated in intuitive ways to be able to see sort of this photograph this large um, big picture context of what's going on. And that shatters the boundary of individual documents. Therefore, if you're going to be pulling out lots of data from an unstructured, unstructured corpus, you have to be able to pull it out from wherever it comes from. You have to know what the context is, what's relevant to kind of the query at hand, and you have to make it intuitive. So in terms of the data level, the three kind of canonical rules that guided us as we developed algorithms to kind of solve this problem in the unstructured space of what to visualize is, first, you have to extract what's relevant. And that's kind of obvious, um, but it's not so obvious to figure out what's relevant. Um, the second point is getting a single answer is rarely useful. Um, it's much more useful to know compared to what. So we have sort of take a little bit the, the humble approach to say we don't know the answer to pretty much any question. Um, but we can give you the tools to try to find that answer. And that's what I mean by kind of when you're pulling out data and visualizing it, you want to be able to visualize it in a way that you see landscapes, you see big picture context, and you understand kind of where that answer fits in the larger perspective. And the third point is you usually don't know what you're looking for. Um, that's probably true in, in every field, ranging from medical to any kind of scientific research to financial. Um, and if you don't know what you're looking for, if the user doesn't know what they're looking for, it makes it much harder for sort of the search algorithms to guess what the user's looking for. So that's really one of the challenges, right? Extracting what's relevant when you don't know what's relevant, putting it in a perspective of things that you don't know necessarily what that perspective is, and finally finding things that the user doesn't even know that they're looking for. So this is sort of like the unknown unknowns in, in defense speak. So the way Quantifying really kind of launched, my background's atomic physics, and some of the first applications we used for the Quantifying engine was to map technology uh, trends with gyroscopes. We were kind of building some precision gyroscopes. And if you search for a gyroscope in a Google or any kind of, kind of keyword query, and you get a list of you know, 10 million documents that have, have the phrase gyroscope, that doesn't really help you. Right? Now, maybe you don't know what you're looking for to help you, but you can look for what you really want is some sort of picture of what are the important trends with gyroscopes. So what I'm showing you here is a search for copper price, and this just sort of highlights the kind of the contrast between traditional kind of document-based retrieval systems and then attempts at kind of visualizing big picture and what's important. Um, if you look at the list view, here you have a list of, you know, a lot of documents that have the phrase copper price. But if I type it in this engine, this is the Quantifying engine, basically Quantifying first learns directly from, from the unstructured corpus, what are the types of data, what are the buckets of data, what's relevant, what kind of data do I care about when I'm looking at the, about copper price. And quantifying without any ontologies automatically learns that here the Chinese yuan is a relevant data type, which tells you a lot of information even before you've looked at a single value. Right? It tells you that Chinese currency is relevant in terms of global big picture copper trading. 
quick step back, kind of um, talking a little bit about the quantifying technology. Um, some of the highlights is everything is really um, automatically learned directly from the corpus what's relevant, right? And that allows you, once you figure out what types of data are relevant to the query, then you can pull back all the, all the values of that data. And then instead of getting a list of documents, what you're visualizing is trends and clusters and correlations along axes that you may have not even known were relevant to your query. Um, the, other pro, the other sort of important highlight here is it's an ontology-free or an ontolo almost an, ont an ontology-free approach um, where basically things are learned directly from the corpus. And the nice thing about that is you're not biased to find data that people used to think was relevant. Right? If you're only focusing on previously hard-coded ontologies, you're only relating different types of data to your topic, that which has been related before by users in building those ontologies. By staying ontology-free, by really being statistical, you can learn interesting new things that really no one's ever thought to relate before. And the third point is sort of a, an absolute must for anyone who's in big data these days. Um, you know, scalable Hadoop platform lets you kind of lets a, you know, start up with without its own data center, kind of begin to approach um, you know, some of these really big data problems. So in terms of data visualization, the, uh, the aspects I'm going to talk about specifically are, are context, understanding clusters, and white space. So by visualizing, by pulling out data from documents and visualizing it, it becomes very powerful that you see where there, data, where there isn't data along a certain uh, metric. And that becomes a very useful tool as well. Um, understanding relationships between different entities and finally looking at trends and outliers. Let's look at context first. So here's the, uh, the quantifying engine. We have the kind of query box, which is pretty familiar to, to all of us. And then we have these discovered data types on the left. Again, as its first pass in the algorithm, as quantifying learns what's relevant to what you're doing, first it categorizes all the data in the corpus into buckets. And it learns automatically from the corpus what those bucket titles should be. Now, before even looking at what those data values are, you learn a lot about the topic, as we saw with, with copper pricing, just from what, what uh, columns are we basically creating and labeling. And by looking at the relevancy ranking, we see that if we're looking at copayment, so basically we're saying, what do customers care about copayments? Before we look at the values, we have the columns that are basically created from the unstructured corpus. And we see that dollar per prescription is ranked higher than dollar per visit, which means when you talk about today's customer concerns, they care more about what they pay for a prescription than they, than they do for a visit. Then you start pulling out all those data points from the unstructured text for that type of dollar per prescription, and we see kind of where that comes from. Let me, here's an example of looking at white space, where again, here the type of data that's suggested to be relevant for paclitaxel, which is a chemotherapy drug, is grams per meter squared per second. Again, learned without any ontologies, to just statistically from the corpus. And you kind of see where the standard treatment dosage is and where it isn't. And that's really kind of the, the power of the white space to understand where there's opportunity for further research. Here's an example of looking at the data spectrum that's pulled out along axes learned from the corpus to find relationships between entities. So here we have quantifying recognizes that if you're looking at the MRTA, back in 96, um, this terrorist group MRTA took over the Japanese embassy in Peru. And this is actually a uh, news corpus from uh, 96. And that's where this is, example is coming from here. Um, if we do a search for MRTA, quantifying suggests correlating organizational data with number of hostages. Not something you necessarily would have intuitively said, all right, I'm looking at MRTA, how many hostages are in the corpus? Yet, because it's relevant statistically, that gets automatically structured and correlated with this organization. And what we see is these two organizations, MRTA and Tupac Amaru Revolutionary Movement, have extremely similar data fingerprints, right? So we can find a relationship between two terrorist organizations here. In fact, they're the same one. One is just the Spanish acronym of the other. Um, by looking at the data that we aggregate and pull out that's contextually related to the search, right? So again, we're, we have to figure out what do we extract? What is relevant? What types of data should we show? And then when we show them sort of in this aggregate data view, we can see relationships that we never would have thought existed before. In terms of finding trends and outliers, again, while looking at a list of documents, it's extremely difficult to know what's interesting, right? But often the question that's really poorly defined of what is interesting about my topic, that's kind of what you want. Um, quantifying by creating structure from the unstructured corpus, an example looking at, say, natural gas. 
So it automatically learned from the corpus that barrels per second and cubic meters per second are interesting types of data to, to visualize in the context of natural gas, right? So these are basically quantified saying, these are the types of data that you might want to take a look at and you might want to correlate them because there's something interesting there. What you can notice then by sort of reducing the entire world of things that might be related to natural gas to these two axes is there's a pretty consistent correlation, sort of linear fit, that most of these uh, refineries put out natural gas and oil along this line, right? But then you see this point jumps out at you, right? This Shell's Mars, Shell Mars uh, facility. And this way you can really see outliers that jump at you that you can't see in a in any sort of you know, document list. So again, the challenge is what do you extract, right? Given a topic here, natural gas, what data do you pull out? When you pull it out, how do you visualize and show that so that the, the human user can very quickly and intuitively understand there's something interesting here? So this is uh, my last slide. I think I'm pretty much out of time. Um, I think there's, uh, the schedule is uh, a couple questions if anyone uh, has any questions. Questions for Ari? Yes, sir. I just had a, a hard time understanding how the system works from the standpoint of it sounds Sorry. like it's, it's analyzing natural language text. And um, the, there probably are a lot of ambiguities that um, make it hard to really interpret what the actual meaning is. And how, does, how does the system to overcome that? Right. So, without getting into the real nitty gritty of the algorithms, um, you're right, there's a lot of natural language processing. Um, we also kind of do a sort of Bayesian feedback on statistical distributions of points, so we can kind of use data that's easy to understand to help us interpret the data that's hard to understand. Hi. What if, what if, what if the corpus is um, from different geographic locations? I mean, in research, you have a lot of different areas and international collaborations, and some have like meters per second, you know? I don't know what a meter is. It's foot, right? Everything. What happens? Yeah, so that's exactly why I changed, you know, I originally said we're ontology free, and I switched it to ontology light. The one, the one sort of ontology piece that is hard coded is understanding kind of the relationships between scientific units. Um, so that all gets flattened and converted. That's kind of the, that's why I had to change it to light, because that's the one piece that we kind of cheat on. It's hard to a priori learn the relationship between a centimeter and an inch. All right, thank you very much.